Good afternoon from Vegas, guys and gals. We're so happy that you're with us. This is theCUBE live at AWS reInvent 22. This is our third day of coverage. We started Monday night, so we're counting that. I'm counting that as day one. Loads of conversations we've had already. We know that you know that because you've been watching. I'm here with Dave Vellante. Dave, great to be here with you with between somewhere between 50,000 and 70,000 people, and we're excited for our next conversation. We've got two folks joining us who are new to theCUBE, soon will be alumni. Milan Bott joins us, the president and head of cloud at Hexaware, and Nikhil Date, the director of engineering and application services at Domestic and General. Guys, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having us. So Domestic and General, or d and is a customer of Hexaware, but Milan, we want to start with you. Give the audience an overview of Hexaware. What do you do? What's the business model? Yeah, so um, Hexaware uh, is a technology services company. Uh, we are a global partner of AWS, and essentially we help customers like Domestic and General uh, you know, accelerate their digital transformation journeys. Uh, we like to think of ourselves as a billion dollar startup, and like Amazon, it is always day one at Hexaware. Um, and um, you know, I look forward to the conversation, uh, but any company in the world that is looking at a cloud-led digital transformation, they have to put Hexaware on the consideration list. Uh, because, you know, not only do we work with a lot of customers, uh, analysts like Gartner, uh, they have rated us as a visionary in helping customers become, um, you know, digitally enabled, uh, bring better customer experience to uh, their end customers. Excellent, well, we're glad to feature Hexaware on the program. Thank Nikhil, you. let's bring you into the conversation. Talk to the audience about domestic in general. What kind of business is it? What's the business model? Sure, thank you. So uh, we are you know, a 110 year old business, right? I mean, we started insuring sheep in Australia, if you believe it, you know, so which is quite an origin story. Uh, but at the moment, you know, the primary business is keeping our customers' world running. So what do I mean by that? We protect uh, in warranty and out of warranty care for domestic appliances, you know, TVs, boilers, refrigerators, washing machines, that kind of thing. Uh, but we are also a B2B company in the sense that you know you might think you're getting a warranty from one of our, some of our biggest customers, like Whirlpool or you know Bosch Siemens or Samsung, but actually it's DNG at the back trying to administer that for you. So you know we are um, we are in 13 countries, uh, just launched in the U.S. last year, but uh, big plans. So it's really interesting because we all have appliances and we can relate, to, especially you know pre or post pandemic, how difficult it is to get service. So you're kind of like. In a way, you've got to build a digital platform like Uber, connecting drivers and passengers, right? right? And, and so, you've got the supply of, yep. of individuals who know how to fix stuff, yep. right? And you want to make it as easy as possible for the customer, so I, was that the genesis of this digital transformation? Can you talk about those business drivers? It, it was actually, and it's a, it's a fantastic point because um, trying to become a platform business is what this journey has been all about for us, right? I think, um, you know, we are, we are a pioneer in what we consider the subscription model. So customers pay a small amount per month as opposed to a big lump sum amount that they have to pay at the point you buy the appliance. And importantly, you can, you can actually buy our product to pay in installments at the point something breaks down. So it's not just something that you buy at the point of sale or at the point you try to register. You can buy it at any, at any time. Um, and, the, and the goal really is to have warranty in a box that you can take anywhere, you know, anywhere in the world. So, you know, but it's a, it's a great point. Digital transformation is what we love. And there is a real um, lack right now of qualified technicians. That's right. Is there anything within the platform to incent those individuals to participate in, in your So business? our, and, and you know, this is uh, what we consider a multi-tier approach. I think uh, at the moment, the service that we offer is largely top tier, right? So we will get you an engineer that is certified by the manufacturer with parts that are wa with the manufacturer warranty, and it's a no fix, no fee model. You know, so you know we we guarantee either to repair or replace the appliance. You know, so that's a it, it's that's the model. But you're right. I think in the the future stage would be you know why wouldn't we want to have anybody who's got the right skills yeah. to come in and work off the platform? Absolutely right. Nikhil, talk about, you said this is a, a, very, a legacy business, been around for quite some time. You've been there for not quite two years. What drew you to the organization and where were they in their digital transformation journey? Because I always think legacy companies, this is a big challenge. It's a cultural it challenge to it really is. transform, but companies these days have no choice. Uh, again, a fantastic point, right? I think um, 
it, some of the you know 110 year old business right and some of the tech you would be forgiven for thinking it's that old uh, but the assets that we had are our people right who are really passionate about the business and i think what we had to do is to find a partner that can upskill the tech but also upskill the people at the same time and upskill the delivery model right so we were a very traditional left to right waterfall you know plan it first big up front planning and then deliver kind of organization and by working with a partner such as hexaware and embracing cloud because you know our our first now go to will be a saas or a cloud provider and you know doing that uh, you know was 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 the mass, massive agenda that drew me you know to the company but i think it, what is what is also fair is you know digitization or digitalization is is a misunderstood and often abused term, right because for for the most part when companies start and i'm i'm not saying it's right or wrong but you know for the most part when companies start on this journey they take a journey that works in the brick and mortar world and we were a contact center business and just try to move it to the digital journey right and and that's it, it's it's not a great customer experience i'll give you an example right now if you call our agent and say yeah i'm trying to register an appliance they will tell you where to look for the serial number but if you're on a digital channel you don't know where to look there's nobody how you know who can help you the model number who remembers the model number of the washing machine they bought right i mean you know it, it's it's stuff like that which is you know which which would feel you know for a digital native my son you know for example would think how can you even ask a customer for that but you know it's it's that change in uh, you know change in the model that's what that's what this is all about that's yeah, like when you get the what's your account number i have no idea what my account number yeah. is right. so when did this whole project start how was Hex hexaware involved and where did hexaware start like how did you sort of gauge what the requirement was take us through that little sure so um, you know uh, when nickel and the rest of the management team came in uh, they came up with a competitive process uh, where you know and, and it is refreshing to remember i think they've stuck true to their vision they were very clear that they were not looking for someone who can just digitize their paper processes but who can help them completely reimagine mm -hmm. um, you know what the new process will look like what the new experience would look like uh, and you know remember they were running this process at the height of the pandemic so we couldn't meet anybody in person uh, we did everything virtual yeah and we were using cloud technology but you know the way they ran the process they wanted to make sure that a provider brings in a mix of experience and engineering expertise uh, and that's that's really hard to find uh, but equally importantly uh, you remember those culture sessions that we did uh, they uh, figured out some very creative ways of making sure that there is a cultural fit so for example they did virtual breakout sessions where you know people were sort of asking each other you know if you want to have dinner with someone like a celebrity who would it be so you know they did these little things to make sure that there is a match and people can actually work relationship building too the relationship building yeah. it's hard to do in a virtual environment but it was a competitive process they looked at us uh, in terms of engineering mm -hmm. um, you know experience our ability to transcend change and run um, and you know really focus uh, and align to keep their objectives first right work as a true partnership Yeah. And do you agree? No, I would agree, and I think you know one of the biggest goals here was to make sure that it, this is not an arm's length vendor relationship, right? You know, these are, this is an extension of our team, so these are our people. You know, for the the people that work on DNG, you know, they 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 work in the DNG way, you know, and and that means that they can also challenge us, which is you know which is quite refreshing, right? People stopping and saying, why are you asking me to do this? It's you know it's very refreshing. I think you know to, to work with a partner that is sold on the vision and committed to helping you achieve success. Where that synergy creates that flywheel, and like you said, at DNG Hex, where we're a team, yeah. we're working together. Nikhil, share with us some of the significant business outcomes yep. that Hexaware Services and AWS are helping the company to achieve. Because there's some big numbers there. Uh, indeed, yeah. Um, so you know, in the digital journey itself, like I said, we are also a B2B business. So one of the you know one of the key challenges is um, every client wants their own stamp, right? So you know, uh, a journey for customer X has to look like the customer X brand, and a journey for customer you know customer Y will have to do the same. um when you you know when you try to stretch this to a technology problem though it means that you know we were trying to be too many things for too many too many people and that slowed things down and increased complexity so from our point of view you know when when we started with the digital journey or in the middle of the digital journey 
we thought we need to have a library of reusable components. We need white labeling, right? So there's a, there was a root and branch re-engineering of the digital proposition to allow us to you know, serve multiple clients with the same underlying technology. And that has meant that you know, in some cases we are going to, going to market you know, two, three times faster than what we were. Costs obviously 50% you know, cheaper. Um, but you know, I think the, the big thing here, and you know, this is the un, unstated benefit, is because now there is a common underlying technology, a innovation that client X wants to do becomes available for client Y. Right. You know, which is which means that you know there's a virtuous circle of you know constant improvement. So you know that from from my point of view, that's the big benefit. And, and would you agree that you are still only in the first yes. quarter of a football game? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, I think a lot of ambitious plans. So yep. so you know this is just the beginning. Yeah. Um, and the way. They have built the organization, the way they have driven the culture change. Um, you know, I'm I'm very hopeful for, yep. for great things to come and really come. Yep. You know, paint a picture of the tech. Uh, I'm interested in the architecture, and I'm really interested in the data component and how that's affected your business. So, I mean, um, you know, multi-layered, multi-layered uh, tech tech architecture, as you can imagine, and you know, we ha we still have a legacy, you know, legacy components running off our own pet mainframe as we like to call it but you know it's um, from a you know from a go forward point of view what we really want is to allow clients to self serve right not have to you know because at the moment the only service we can offer is what what I call the white glove right which means you know somebody has to sit down with us have a discussion on the requirements but people should be able to self serve you know look at a catalog of what what it is we can do for them and go for it uh, data is a very interesting point, right? Because not only are there uh, you know, geography restrictions around where customer data can go to, uh, obviously payments and PCI compliance is, a, is an issue. Uh, but last but not least, you know, some of this data is very you know, unique to what the clients want to own and manage. And you know, if, if you are a, you know, a, a typical homeowner, you will have appliance for all, from all kinds of manufacturers, right? Many of whom would be our customers. But how much data we can share because we recognize you as a person, but how much data we can share, there are restrictions. But you know, building our, our data abstraction layer allows us to you know, take care of that. So, you know, but you're absolutely right in terms of, but again, the potential for where the data can, can, be, can be mined, because you know, the engineer also has to be local to where you live, you know, you can't, you can't come from 100 miles away. Uh, so you know, the ability to use data to you know, not just transform our business, but our client's business is phenomenal. You know. Do you actually have a mainframe? You, you yes, do. we do. <laughs> <laughs> Adam Slipsky wants to move it into the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have every possible technology that you can think of. I mean, yeah. hundred yeah. year old business evolved over a period of time, um, and you know, if I could add, you know, uh, what ha what has been really impressive about the decision making at DNG is that they have adopted cloud in the right way, right? So they are, they are one of the few customers who have truly taken AWS well architected to heart. They have taken things like, you know, take the right workloads to the cloud and you know, wait to do the right remediations before you take the rest of the workloads to the cloud. They've used native services available on AWS from a, a apps perspective as well as a data perspective. Um, so, so that's sort of, a little bit more color on the technology and architecture. But, but you've essentially sassified your business, mm -hmm. you know, and you're basically have D and G cloud that you're delivering to your customers for self serve. Is that? That's the vision. Fair? Yes, you know, yeah. the idea is to get there, and you know, if we assemble what I call you know out of the box solutions in a clever way, then that becomes the platform that you can replicate success on. And at the moment, our business needs what I call boots on the ground. When we are a true platform business, we should be able to operate without having you know, any presence in country yeah. with the partners leveraging the, you know, leveraging the platform to do right. what's next. Gee, I'm curious, uh, Milan, you said that one of the great things that DNG has done is really adopted cloud in the right way. Do you, Nikhil, think of cloud first or cloud right approach? Because you've got a mainframe, so I'm just wondering if it's more what's right for cloud versus everything cloud first. Correct. I mean, I actually, you know, or we actually tend to start even two steps before that, right? I think it's really whether we need to buy or whether we need to build, right? And and if we need to buy, then you know, how easily would that thing that has been bought fit into what is a very complex architecture? As as Milan said, right? I mean, any technology you can imagine, we probably have it. 
Um, but we want to simplify, right? And this is a journey, so which means that, you know, we start with, can a SaaS product do it? Um, and then we also want to go where, wherever we are building, then it has to be on the cloud. It has to be designed for scaling. It has to be designed to be in multiple geographies, multiple countries, with the relevant data protection baked in. So you know that's the that's the decision thinking process. You know that that the goal is to not. I mean, um, we had a you know we had a project. Uh, uh, started 18 months ago that wanted to buy more tin, but we put a stop to that, right? And saying that, you know, come on, you can't, can't have that. Not, not in, the, in this day and age, you know, we, when, the, when the cloud can pretty much do everything that you need. Do you think of DNG, and I'm, I'm, this is a question for you, we're almost out of time, but I'm just curious. Uh, I'm looking at your website, DNG, the experts who repair and replace the household products everyone relies on. With. Do you think about it as a repair company? Do you think about it as a tech company that delivers these repair services? It's a, I mean, th this is the conversation we have in our teams all the time, right? That when our vision is successful, we will become a tech business. At the moment, I don't think we are, you know. Uh, at the moment, I think we are on a journey, on journey, you know, because, you know, we are, we, we are multi-channel, you know, we, and, and our customers love us, you know, touch wood, you know, so th thank, but are we a true tech company? No, but we're getting there. I think, you know, that's, that's the plan. You're on the, you're on the journey. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Last question for each of you, a little bit different. Milan, question for you. You have a billboard, or a bumper sticker, whichever, or maybe a sticker for your laptop, and it's about Hexaware, and you want to really convey in a compelling but really short way, why are we so great? What would that sticker say? Awesome. Um, like I said at the, at the beginning, if you are thinking about a digital transformation, if you are a company that has been around for a long time, you've got to think of us um, you know, as a partner. Uh, so that, that's that's what I would say because you know the purpose of, of our company is uh, uh, creating smiles through a combination of great people and technology. Um, so that's what we live for, and you know brought brought a smile to me when Nikhil said that our customers love us, and somewhere we have a small role to play in that. Yeah. I love that. Nikhil, I'm going to ask the same question. I was going to ask you a different one, but I would love to, I mean, we talked a lot about D&G and the incredible business transformation that you've been on. What's that bumper sticker for D&G? Uh, what is that bumper sticker for D&G? Oh yeah, okay. I, we want to keep your world running, right? I mean, you know, from, from our point of view, you, know, you rely on the appliances to keep your home running, and we want you to rely on us to make sure your world keeps running. You know, that's, that's what this is all about. It has to be slick. Uh, Touch wood, hopefully you never have a problem, but if you do, we want to be there you know, for you to make sure that your world keeps running. I love it. Awesome, guys. Thank you, Milan, Nikhil. Thank you so much for joining Dave Thanks, and me guys. on the program. Thank you, I enjoyed the conversation. Great partnership, HexAware, first time on theCUBE. Now you're an alumni, you're an alumni too. We appreciate your insights, sharing the story. It's a really compelling story. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for much. all the support, thank you. Nikhil. Of course. All right. Thanks, thank you. For our guests and for Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live enterprise and emerging tech coverage.